R2 the motherfucking dog. Why they mad? Hey, yo, Pluto. Like you going, going brazen? Shit. Ah. But let's get it. Yeah. It's probably the realest shit I ever wrote. VIP Red Dog 1. The O is for the 16 ounces that's in a whole pound They really out here feeling my music, shout out the whole town K is for the killers I know, who keep the four pound You give an inch, he taking the mouth, like it was fourth down The L is for the ladies for sure, I mean the real ones Who out here working hard for they What's up world, what's up YouTube It's your boy R2 man and we back with another banger You know what I'm saying, so yeah Go on and get your popcorn, man, and your cold drink, man, and come on and, you know what I mean, kick it with your partner, you know what I'm saying? Um, first and foremost, man, I want y'all to go down there and hit that like button, man, hit that subscribe button, man. I appreciate all of, all of the support, man, you know what I'm saying? The comments, the good, the bad ones, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Keep it coming, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, so today we're going to get right to it, man. Uh, this is... Um, this is a story about the, um, you know, maximum security prisons in Oklahoma, man. Uh, uh, this one in particular, man, uh, is Holdenville, Holdenville, Oklahoma. Uh, so I pulled up to Holdenville probably about 2016 or something like that, man. Some this was in my last, you know, prison term right here. You know what I mean? Uh, that I've been free from for about four years now, going on five. So uh, yeah, man, I get to Holdenville. Um, I get to Holdenville and I notice how it's moving. Well, anybody who's been to Holdenville, man, you know Holdenville is really like a lockdown facility. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's control movement. You know, you probably got five minute, five minute control movement time. You know what I'm saying? What control movement means is, you know, uh, you got, let's see, A, B, C, and D. So you got four units on the, you know, on the yard. You know what I'm saying? You got four units that's um that's fenced in each unit is fenced in by itself you know and you got one gate one way in one way out you know um and that fence is around the housing unit you know which contains two sides the a and b side you know what i'm saying or you know a one and two side or whatever you know or north and south side you know what i'm saying so you got a south a north type of deal you know what i'm saying b south b north so um you know, I'm noticing how this prison is going. So it's you know, it's not too much movement, man. We might get to go go to rec like you know, um we might get to go to rec once a day, maybe. And that just means being able to go outside in the in closed fence area, you know, to where we may can do some, you know, working out on the pull up bar or whatever. You know, they got a little basketball court right there where you can shoot a little hoop or you can go in the little grass area and holler through the fence and communicate with the unit, you know, across from y'all, you know what I'm saying? Um, Negroes throw stuff over, you know, that's, so you just imagine, you know, how tight of a, you know, secure place this is. So it really, you know, it ain't really too many ways that, you know, we can make it shake around here, you know what I'm saying? And um, any yard I ever been on, man, you know, I kind of, I, I, I like a yard that's, you know, moving to where we can be able to be on the phone, you know what I'm saying, smoke a little trees, you know what I'm saying, cigarettes, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody like no butt naked yard, you know what I'm saying, to where we, it ain't no phones, no cigarettes, no weed, you know what I'm saying, no drugs, you know, that's a real hard time for a convict, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, we, you know, I'm on this yard or whatever, you know, and I'm seeing how it's moving. Well, you know, it's not too many, you know, people hitting for the bag over here, you know what I'm saying? So if you do happen to get a chance to get the bag, you know, it could be very, very beneficial. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I end up, you know, now. One of the ways that the bag is moving in a place like this is the is the females, you know, now when I got to this yard, the females was kind of loose, you know. They had a couple, you know, ghetto chicks that was, you know, m moving the bag and they was loud with it. You know what I'm saying? And um, when you're doing that, you know, if you got you a Jake, if you got you an officer, you know, that you, you know, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a female. You know, y'all going to get into some kind of relationship. You know, you're going to, you know, the, 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 the thing that you want to do is make her fall in love with you. And then, boom, you know what I'm saying now? you're going to introduce her to the money and what could possibly be made if she followed these instructions and blase, blase, and we can get it on like that. You know what I'm saying? 
And anybody that's a real, you know, uh, player and know how to carry yourself and know how to stay sharp and on his toes and on his A game, you know, you can be able to, you know, accomplish this mission if you, you know, handle it correctly. You know what I'm saying? If, you know, you bump into a guard that may take a liking to you or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? You can make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So, um, my particular unit, we end up getting a new guard or whatever, you know, and she was, she was a white girl. You know what I'm saying? She was, you know pretty young, you know, um, and, you know, she was friendly, you know what I'm saying? So inmates, man, this is what they look for. You know, if they catch a guard that's friendly, you know what I'm saying? They're going to stay on her bumper. You know what I'm saying? You, She can she could be doing count or she could be, you know, doing her walks. You know, it's going to be somebody on her heels, you know, trying to get at her or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So this one particular guard, um, you know, she had already took a liking to a dude on the pod. You know, and um, he was a dark skinned dude, you know, clean cut, you know what I'm saying? Young looking dude, you know what I mean? So it was obvious that she liked dark skinned dudes, you know what I'm saying? Well, the youngster who ended up catching her interest first, you know, out of all these inmates around here, you know, this dude caught her interest, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he was more like, um, like he was still young, you know, green to the penitentiary. So, you know, he wasn't typically the dude that was, you know, that 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 was going, you know, make the bag happen. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, he just wanted to draw pictures, and you know, and 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 you know, he 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 just be happy getting a smile out of her or her walking him around the pod and talking to him. You know, that was good enough for him. But you know, that you know, as a you know, when you're in the in the in the joint, you know. <laughs> You know, love letters and conversation, you know, that don't that don't feed us, you know what I'm saying? So we trying to, you know, the initial, you know, purpose of, you know, messing with a guard is to get the bag, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bump out, you know, all the other stuff will come later. If you want to get you some, you know, coochie or whatever, you know, let that be later, but get the bag first, you know what I'm saying? So he wasn't typically on that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they was, you know, they was cool or whatever, you know, so he had already started the rapport with her, you know, so he kind of broke the ice for me, you know, but he messed up and went to jail one day, you know, the police, you know, see now when you sweating her and you all up in her face all the time, you know, the police are looking at that too. They watching to see, you know, who she's being friendly with because they don't want no interactions with the inmate and the staff. They already know that's how we getting what we need. So they don't want to, you know, on the outside looking in, you can't make it look too obvious. You know what I'm saying? So they ran up in his cell one day thinking that, you know, it was a little more than what it is. I think she gave him a sandwich one day or something, you know, and they seen her give it to him on camera and they ran up in his cell. Well, come to find out when they run up in his cell, he'd been drawing pictures of her and he's, you know, he's fascinated with her. So when they see this, you know, they, they 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 look at that as a threat to the facility. You know, he getting too comfortable with our officer. So instead of moving her around, they moved him around. You know what I'm saying? So he tricked himself off just like that. You know, he blew it for himself. You know what I'm saying? He got put on another pod. They took him to jail, and then he ended up getting out probably some months later or whatever. You know what I mean? They probably hit him with a little bull crap right up, you know, uh, fraternizing with the staff or something like that, you know, just to be able to lock him up. You know, that's what they'll do to you behind behind the fence. You know what I'm saying? If they catch you, you know, being too friendly with a, you know, officer or whatever, you know, and if you don't have a phone, if you or your celly don't have a phone, you know, it ain't no way. The only time you're going to get to talk to her is at work. You know what I'm saying? Now, where this was beneficial to me was, for one, me and my celly had a phone, you know, well, my celly had a phone. I just so happened to be his celly. You know what I mean? Well, me and this dude, we was tight. You know, we was like kinfolk. You know, this is my guy. This is my relative. You know, I'm fucking with him. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, and, and he was a crib. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, this is he was older than me, you know. And we was, you know, we was on the same mission. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was my benefit. I had a phone. So, any kind of little moves that I made throughout the day, rather it had been getting at a guard or whatever, you know, I had the benefit of telling her, you know, you know, whatever my spiel was, I'm trying to get with you or whatever, whatever my spiel was, you know, I could get with you after hours. You know what I'm saying? So it, it'll be much more of a impact, you know, 
our conversations. You know, we can stay up talking all night. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you want to do, because I'm going to do whatever I got to do to make you feel comfortable. So you, so when I hit you with this proposal, you know, you're going to be more inclined to be with it. You dig what I'm saying? So, so boom, you know, um, I'm walking the pod one day and my, and my celly, my relative, he tapped me one day. He like, Hey, red dog, man, you know, um, Man, you ain't been paying attention to what's going on. I'm like, what you talking about? I'm kind of green, you know, to the situation. You know, I I hadn't, I ain't gonna say green. I just hadn't peeped that she was peeping me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the type of dude I am. I'm not gonna chase no woman down. You know, you're gonna have to show interest in me and then press the gas. You know, I'm not a, you know, I'm a, I may say something slick to see if you smile or go for it. If you go for it, you know, then I'm there. But, you know, I'm not initially just chasing no broad down, never. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking the pod, doing my routine, doing push-ups or whatever. Got my headphones on. My kid folks tap me like, hey, you don't see what's going on? I'm like, what you talking about? He like, man, shorty, she just won't stop looking at you. He like, man, I think she like dark-skinned dudes. You know what I'm saying? I think that's her thing. And, you know, he just so happened to be right. You know what I'm saying? So... When he tell me this, I instantly go into, you know, my little Mac mode or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I start talking to her, saying little stuff to her. As I'm passing, you know, I'm walking laps. Her desk sits in the middle of the pod. So as I'm walking laps, you know, I'm smiling at her, saying little slick stuff to her. You know, not just all up on her to where this camera in the sky is watching. So, you know, I'm saying little stuff to her. And eventually, you know, we start you know, talking as she's walking the pod, you know, and another thing. Now, on the pod I was on, I was the orderly, you know, so any given count time, depending on the officer, my cell can stay open, you know what I'm saying? Because as soon as she finished her count, and as soon as they cross count, and as soon as it clear, you know, to where it's a, you know, for the for our pod, not for the whole yard, but just as soon as our pod numbers check out, I can come out myself, continue sweeping the pod, taking the trash out or whatever. You know, a lot of people be like, man, dudes be getting jobs in the penitentiary. Yeah, well, I had a I had a pod orderly job for this reason to be able to, you know, see, it's, it's, it's different reasons. It's being out your cell during count time can be, you know, beneficial. You can see when the cert team coming, you know, the goon squad, if they trying to sneak in on us, bring the drug dog, you know, I can you know, whistle, let the pod know what's going on, all kind of, you know, typically every pod likes to have an orderly out because I might need a light during count to smoke and you got to go to this cell, get me a light, bring it to my cell, a wick or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, or I might need you to slide me a magazine, you know, so that was my thing. I, I fooled with everybody, you know what I'm saying? I'm a blood, I'm a whoop, but you know, Red Dog, he going to mess with everybody because, for one, I'm a hustler. You know, you got to be able to get, to get money. You got to be able to fool with every kind of different set. You know what I'm saying? And I got 10 folks from everywhere. You know, I got a big family, you know, and, you know, I got respect. Anybody who know me pretty much respect me, you know, show me love because I'm a real one. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so me and Shorty, we hook up or whatever, and, you know, during count time one time, I said something slick to her. I'm like, you know, I figured out, she told me where she was from. So initially when she told me where she was from, I knew the area code to where she stayed. And I told her, I'm like, I know the area code. Just give me the rest of the seven and I'm going to get with you after hours. And she did that. And in my mind, in my Sally's mind, you know, he already seen it. He seen it unfold before I seen it. He like, man, it's on. And me and him, we had already discussed if we ever get a Jake, it don't matter if you get her or if I get her, you know, because he was a brown skin older, you know, he had a couple grays, but he got these long ponytails, you know, he been, he penitentiary out, he been in this joint damn near his whole life, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm the young and out moving around, I do the footwork, you know, he sit back, play defense, you know, and we just made a good team, you know what I'm saying? So... We already had it lined up. So all I had to do was put the full court press down on Shorty. So for the next week, I'm at her every night. We on the phone chopping. I'm sending her pictures. She's sending me pictures. I'm breaking her down. You know what I'm saying? We building a bond. I'm talking. You know, I find out she got a kid. You know, she young. She about 22. You know what I'm saying? College student. You know, softball, play softball, all this good stuff. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm messing with that. You know what I'm saying? I like that. You know what I mean? So 
So we get real, you know, acquainted. So by us getting real acquainted, you know, I put this proposal down. I put the proposal down. She goes for the proposal. You know what I'm saying? She goes for the proposal. You dig what I'm saying? So it's on like a thong. You dig what I'm saying? Anybody who's been to penitentiary behind the wall, as y'all say, out west, level four, level three yard, we behind the fence, man. Ain't nothing but killers and dealers back here. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, so she's with the play. So this how, this how I do the play. Now, everybody on the pod is watching us. You know what I'm saying? So it's no privacy on the pod at all. So this was my plan. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm a you gonna run into my people. They are gonna give you the faux, you know, the faux zips in a what we call a keister. You know what I'm saying? Faux zips in a keister with some Newports, a couple lighters, you know, papers, all in one woo wop. You know what I'm saying? Pick it up tomorrow when you come to work. Go up with it. Slide it on through. Now, she played with fire, y'all. She was supposed to put it in her, you know, oo-wop and come through the door with it. She slid it in her panties, man, and and walked right on through the door. But she was such a pretty little white girl that, you know, they probably looking at her like they want to hit, and they just skinning and grinning, and she didn't slid through with the bizag. You know what I'm saying? So this was my plan. Now, I knew that everybody was going to be watching, so. Now, I had to get it from her hands to my hands. Well, this is what I done. Um, every morning for breakfast, you know, we used to get up about five. Everybody know prison, man, breakfast. They start breakfast early. They start breakfast about 4.30. They start calling units, you know what I'm saying? So when I had already let her know, I'm going to come out to get me, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm leave my ice chest on top of the ice machine. I'm going to leave a blue ice chest on top of the ice machine. So when we go to breakfast, I'm going to come out like I'm, you know, planning on getting me some ice and I'm going to leave this ice chest on top of the cooler. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to go on to breakfast. Woo, wow, woo, because she coming to work at six. So it's about five o'clock. She'll be here in about an hour. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to see her walking through the, you know, once she make it through control and all that. You know what I'm saying? Once I see her, I know it's a go. You know what I'm saying? So that whole night, I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I can't even sleep. You know what I'm saying? My kinfolk, he can't even sleep. He acting like he cool, but he can't sleep either. You know what I'm saying? Because we know what we got on the line. You know what I'm saying? We know what's fits to go on. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of dry over here at the time. We finna kill him. You know what I mean? And, you know, this wasn't my first time getting on, but, you know, any other time I had got on, it was through somebody else. So, you know, they taking a percentage and all that. Now I got my own lane. Now we ain't got to deal with nobody. Now we ain't got to wait on nobody or none of that. You know, this is my move and my move only. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, anybody know that's been behind the fence, it's Christmas time, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we finna really get it on. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so boom. I put my ice chest on the cooler, go to breakfast. Here comes six o'clock. I go back in my cell, lock my cell, boom. Now, the officer before them, you know, they locking everybody down. So shift change coming. She's coming with shift change. You know what I'm saying? She done made it. You know what I'm saying? The eagle has landed. I done seen her coming down the sidewalk. It's green. You know what I'm saying? She got that step to a walk. It's, it's Gucci. You know what I'm saying? So she come in, you know, she relieve her officer. And do what she do and blase blase. So she's she starting her paperwork for the day. You know what I'm saying? Now when she, I, I'm looking at her the whole time. She ain't even looked at me yet. She she played it real smooth. You know what I'm saying? Um, she ain't even looked at me yet. She doing her she doing her Dougie at the desk or whatever. I got my eyes zoomed right on her. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm like a little kid waiting waiting on dad to come pick you up. He been telling you come and take you baseball, take you play baseball. And, and you you just getting out of school, getting home, can't even get your school clothes off quick enough, you know what I'm saying, and get your play shoes on quick enough so you can go with dad. You dig what I'm saying? Well, today we going with dad. You dig what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there watching the bag. You feel me? So I'm, I'm hawking the bag. And uh, so she starts off to do her morning count, her first count. As soon as she slide by my door, she see me in the window, she look at me and, and give me that eye and let me know what's happening. So she already know the play. So she count. Go across the hall, count. Now, when she come back from counting, she go to the ice machine, get some ice in a cup, you know, take that out, stick it in the cooler, boom, get her ice and go on back to her desk. You know what I'm saying? 
Now, I'm the orderly. She know this. You know what I'm saying? So she popped my dough. You know, I come out, grab my broom, do my sweeping. You know, sweep. You know, I'm... I'm singing, I'm singing, you know what I mean? I'm singing the, 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 I'm singing the good tune. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? I know what's going on. So, you know, and, uh, so I get to my cooler, throw some ice in there, make it look real good. Go back to my cell. Like I'm taking my ice chest back to my cell. I don't feel much, my, my, my thing up. Boom. So it's secure, you know, touchdown, you know what I'm saying? We didn't, we didn't won the championship, you know what I'm saying? For real, I felt like I won the, won the, the, the goddamn old NBA finals, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like that, you know what I'm saying? I did that, you know what I mean? So, so boom, I go to my little white buddy instantly and tell him, here, man, make this disappear, put this up, you know what I'm saying? He instantly go up with it, you know, because this is a real secure facility, so at any given time, you know, the CERT team or the drug dog could come through here, and, and if it's out and available, it's over with. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you're going to have to go up with that. Boop, 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 make it disappear. You know, we used to keep a booty man on the pod. You know, that when I was hustling on the pod, I kept a booty man because I'm going to keep some zips on the pod. I'm going to keep a few zips or whatever you may want, you know, so I'm going to keep a few booty mans. I'm talking about dudes that's going to, you know, wrap it up, put it right up the booty, walk around with it in their in they booty all day. You know what I'm saying? You walk around with a quarter pound in his booty all day. You know what I'm saying? Get some dudes in the penitentiary that can walk around with a half a pound, whole pound in their booty all day, for real. There's some dudes in there with some... With some with some blown out, blowed out buttholes, man, for real. You know what I'm saying? It come from doing all that extra act- curricular activity. It come from, you know, getting ran up in, all that. You know what I'm saying? All that over there. You know what I'm saying? Anything you even heard about the penitentiary, it's definitely true. You definitely got motherfuckers in there that's in there blowed out. You know what I'm saying? Whole booty hole gone. But anyway, you know, so I take it to the booty man who get a package to the booty man. It's on. So we... Now we on, you know what I'm saying? I get a couple, you know, I get a, I get time to break it down and all that. We go to moving. Now, it's other dudes on this pod trying to get at this girl. You know what I'm saying? She telling me after work, she telling me that the that the that the Tulsa dudes is telling her that oh you messing with the bloods now and whoop 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 you know because they can see. You know, they seeing me, you know, making her smile and all that. Because like I say, it ain't no privacy. So they see what's going on, but they don't know what's going on. They think they know what's going on, but they don't know what's going on. Because, you know, it ain't no way that you can, you know, tie me to her because we ain't doing, like I say, I got a phone, man. I got access to a phone. So all our talking that we do from here on out is on the phone. After the, all the sales is locked, y'all don't know what's going on. Yeah, y'all know me and my celly got a phone, so they kind of putting two and two together. You know what I'm saying? So, man, not even two weeks go by, bro. Not even two weeks. And see, this is what's wrong with the penitentiary system. It's always a rat somewhere. But see, I'm two steps ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? So, during count time, on whatever day this is, a couple weeks from then, you know, I'm making a shake. A couple weeks, a week, police hit our cell during count time. Now, it's an officer named Cartwright. Anybody ever been to Holdenville? I think he dead now. I think he rest in peace. But Cartwright was a bad mother scooter. I'm talking about this dude could smell phones. He could smell them. He could smell phones. He could. He, he had a. He was like a 70 year old man, bro. But he moved like a 20 year old. You know what I'm saying? And he knew every inmate on the yard that was known for doing anything illegal. He knew your name. He knew you by name, and he could call you out by name from way across the yard. And if he tell you to get on the wall and don't move, you better get on the wall and don't move, or it's supposed to be some, it's supposed to be some smoke in the city. It's supposed to be some hell to tell the captain. You know what I'm saying? So we already, we already got it. We got all our drugs put up. Now the only thing we slipped on is we had our phone still in the cell. It was put up, but it was in the cell. So they turned our cell up. Now, before this, they called me to the captain shack because they, like I said, it's an eye in the sky, a camera up there. They seen me, you know, just being friendly with her, talking to her, you know, her smiling at me, woo woo. You know, I'm out all the time, you know. So they called me to the captain shack, like, hey, and they showed me the video of me standing there talking to her. And I'm like, man, we ain't talking about nothing. 
you know, she likes sports. I'm just shooting the bobo with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just a friendly person. You know, it ain't nothing. And they like, okay. You know, that was like they warning. So once they did that to me, I was already kind of tightened up. I really didn't like having the, cell, the phone in the cell, but where else was we going to put it? You know what I'm saying? So, but we used to keep the toilet. We had a thing that unscrewed the toilet, pull the toilet off, wrap it up in saran wrap, stick it behind the toilet over with some toilet paper wrapped up, stick it behind the toilet, push the toilet back, screw it back in. You know what I'm saying? Well, when they hit the cell, some kind of way, I don't know who told them where it was at, but they found the phone. So now, now we got to go to jail. Well, luckily for us, they didn't take us to jail that day. So the next day they came and took us to jail. By this time, we already had our affairs in order. We was already prepared to go to jail with what we had. You did what I'm saying? So we went to jail with what we had. Now, back here in phases, this is maximum security to where you can't go nowhere without your hands shackled and your feet shackled. You know what I'm saying? So... We back her on phases. You got to do like nine months in this program or whatever the case may be for you to get back on the yard. But I never made it back to the yard, and this is why. So my same celly that I had on the yard, I had in jail. We we in the same cell. Well, like I say, we back her with dope on us. I've been back here moving my dope since I got back here. You know, my, my people, he kind of like reserved. He don't really like people knowing what he got. He one of the niggas that he'll get something, he'll try to hold on to it for three, four years. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm a hustler. I'm moving mine. You know, I'm trying to get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't really, I don't mess with ice. You know, I had some of that. But the weed, we're going to smoke that. But the ice, I'm trying to move that because I'm really tired of holding on to it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to move it as fast as I can. Well, he holding on to his. So one day, you know, he go to wreck. I didn't go to wreck this day. I stayed back. Well, for one of us to go to wreck, both of us got to be handcuffed. You're going to stick your handcuff through the bean hole and you're going to cuff up. And he got to do the same thing so they can open the cell door because they will not open the cell door if both of us is not restrained, you know, for their safety. And I guess ours too. So this day, you know, he go to wreck. I don't. Now I'm in the cell chilling. Now, before I say this, he go to wreck. He got everything that he illegal that he got for him. His his half and his stuff is on him. It's on him. You know what I'm saying? It's in his waistband. You know, um, I got a little something left. I ain't really got much left. I got a little, I got a little bull crap, little couple grams in a bag, you know what I'm saying? That I got left. So I I, I ain't got nothing left. I'm I'm down to my last little old little old, you know what I'm saying? So um he go to wreck, I stay back. Now it's this, it's this crazy guard working, and she's a weirdo. I didn't cuss her out two or three times, but I didn't say nothing to her today. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say nothing to her today. You know, I was just chilling, in the cell, chilling, doing my duggy. You know what I'm saying? Watching TV or whatever, writing raps or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, she must have. Now, since we've been back here, they done already caught in our write-up hearing. You know, they called me down there for the write-up hearing, and they tell me that they know we've been back here with dope. I'm like, man, I don't know what you're talking about, man. So they take me back to the cell, you know. But I told my people about that. So this was two, three days early. This is at our right up here. Now here it is. This day, we he going to wreck. I stay back. Well, they was planning to bum rush the cell. But see, he went to wreck and I didn't. So when they brought him back, I'm thinking they just finished sticking back in the cell. Well, they didn't say nothing about searching the cell. They didn't say nothing because I wouldn't even let them search. I would have cleaned up first you know i still had a little bag of stuff but they never found this in the mix of them looking to see what they could find it dropped on the floor because we end up finding it under the bunk later on you know what i'm saying later on you know after the fact or somebody found it or whatever you know they never found that my they never found what i had the little bag that i had they never found it you know what i'm saying and uh so when they bringing him back in the cell you know i cuff up to let him back in the cell well when i cuff up they open the door and say hey Y'all step out. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, y'all step out. We already out now, so it ain't nothing we can do. We already both cuffed. Now, he got in his waistband probably like 12, 13, 14 chaps of dope. You know what I'm saying? Now, they stick us in these two cages. Well, when they stick us in these two cages, they tell us to strip. They make us strip and hand them every piece of clothes that we got. They tell me to strip. I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? My little shit is upstairs in the cell. They searching. I'm thinking they're going to find it. But if they do, I'm like, shit, that ain't nothing but a, a little gram or two. You know, that ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? But they never found it. You know what I'm saying? 
um, only thing they found was what was on this dude. You know what I'm saying? So he go to take off his drawers, a whole little knot fall out with 15, 16 chaps of dope in it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, now they only, now they, they tripping. You know, they tripping with him because they found this, you know, now they done found this dope. Well, you know, for one, you shouldn't have been walking around with that on you like that. You should have been already prepared, had that up to, you know, the, the blue hole, you know, the cool hole. You know, I would. So, you know, they find it or whatever. I mean, all they can do is write us up or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. We're already back here in trouble. We're already in jail. So, you know, boom, they take us back up to the cell. Now, when we get up to the cell, my this nigga feeling some kind of way towards me. He like, you know, as soon as they undo his cuffs, as soon as they undo his cuffs, they undo mine first. Now, I'm trying to put my stuff back together on the bed. They didn't the cell up. Now, you know, as soon as they uncuff him, the police still at the door, bro. They still got the bean hole open on my mama. They still got the bean hole open. He he like, Red Dog, we got to get out and take off on me. Boop, 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 take off on me. We start locking for a quick second. Boop, 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 boop. We lock it. Boop, 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 boop. Now, the police see this. They instantly take this orange mace and start spraying through the bean hole. Man, the hottest stuff I ever felt in my life. I'm talking about that orange C2 or CS stuff, whatever it's called. Man, that shit is hot, bro. You dig what I'm saying? So they spraying us down. Stop. So now I'm like, oh, this nigga's a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Because why would you do that in front of the cops? If you wanted to get down with me, as soon as they walked off or whatever or got off the pod, we could have fought all day, bro. We could have fought all day. We in the cell with each other. We can't go nowhere. I'm like, I'm like, nigga, you weird. You know what I'm saying? Now they sprayed us all down. With, I got mace all in my eyes and shit. They like... And I'm tripping. I'm I'm going hard. I'm like, nigga, you a weirdo, nigga. Woo, woo. You know, I got this stuff all in my eyes and stuff. So, man, they take they take me. They take him out. They take me out. Now they split us up. They put me in the cage. This this C two stuff then 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 slid down in my dick hole, bro. That hot ass stuff slid down in my dick hole, bro. I'm spazzing. I'm banging my head on the glass, telling them to bring me some water. I'm I'm tripping out because it's in my it's in my it's in my pee hole and, and it's killing me, bro. Worst worst pain I ever felt in my life, bro. I'm banging my head on the on the on the cage. I'm I'm handcuffed, so I can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So they finally bring me some water, man, and I able to pour it on my, on my, you know, take it and pour it on my, you know, on my, my private, you know what I mean, and, and kind of soothe it a little bit. But man, I messed up and, and 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 begged them to put me in the shower. Why did I do that? Because when you, what I didn't know was when you put water on that stuff, that orange shit. When you put water on that stuff, it activates it, bro. It burned me up, man. I'm talking about burned me up. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. They end up splitting us up. The homies laughing at me on the pod because I'm spazzing out and I'm crying because I got this stuff in my pee hole and I'm I'm yelling, I'm banging my head. They like, Red Dog, you you crazy, you down there, you got this that stuff hot, ain't it? I'm like, yeah, nigga, you know it's hot. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's a that's a crazy story, man. About um, you know, the quick rise and quick fall, you know what I mean, of a of a million dollar, what could have been a million dollar operation, man. Due to some, you know, some whole, some whole, you know, behavior, you know, putting a kite in on us or whatever the case may be. However, they, you know, uh, got on to us or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know what I mean? That should let you know, man, stay away from prison, man. Stay away from prison. You know what I mean? To all the youngsters out there, man, if you think about joining the street life or if you're in the street life, man, you got one foot in, you got one foot out. Hey, man, take that foot that you got in and put it right back out, man. Take your butt to school and learn something. You know what I'm saying? For real. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, prison ain't no joke and it's really going down. You know what I'm saying? You can really get hurt. You know what I'm saying? And, and it can be real ugly. You know what I'm saying? But like I told y'all, man, first video, first couple of videos, all my prison stays, you know, I never had a bad prison stay. You know what I'm saying? I was always blessed to be able to, you know, um, have it my way and kind of, you know, do my time how I want to do my time. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, um, that's another episode, man. And, and until next time, y'all stay down. Keep it real. You know what I mean? Stay out the way and stay dangerous, man. And oh, yeah, before you go, if you haven't, man, Reach down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you tap that bell so when I drop these bangers, man, you be the first, one of the first ones to get it, man. You know what I'm talking about? It's your boy R2, man, and I'm gone, man.
or to the motherfucking AJB. dog. Why they mad? Hey, yo, Pluto. Like you going brazen. brazen. Ah. But let's get it. Yeah. It's probably the realest shit I ever wrote. VIP Red Dog 1. The O is for the 16 ounces that's in the whole pound They really out here feeling my music, shout out the whole town K is for the killers I know, who keep the four pound You give an inch, he taking the mile, like it was fourth down The L is for the ladies for sure, I mean the real ones Who out here working hard for they